Good afternoon, everybody. Today in the Contemporary Political Ideologies course, we will cover conservatism as a political ideology. The source will depend on is uh, from a chapter entitled Conservatism from Andrew Haywood's book, Political Ideologies and Introduction. And you can find this book uh, on Moodle, uh, or not the book, the chapter itself on uh, Moodle. Uh, so you can study the chapter from uh, via a Moodle. And also, uh, what's ahead? What are we going to do in today's lecture? Uh, at first, we will define what is uh, conservatism, what's the meaning of uh, conservatism. Uh, and also, we will know the origin and the role of the spiritual fountainhead of conservatism, you all know him, Edmund Burke. So what's the ro what, what was his role, how he influenced this ideology, and how uh, he influenced the path of conservatives later on. And uh, third, we will cover the key pillars and values of conservatism. And fourth, we will uh, stress on the main schools and divisions. Uh, of conservatism and uh, at last we will cover conservatism in a global age uh, but that would be in the uh, coming uh, lecture so at first what's what how can we define conservatism conservatism uh, it comes from the word to conserve what's the meaning of to conserve it's to just be uh, uh, afraid of change, uh, moderate or cautious behavior, so that all this was associated with the word conservatism. But mean, it means cons preser preserving traditions, preserving culture. Uh, and it always, uh, when we say somebody is conservative, it's always associated with the idea that he is more conventional, he's more moderate or having a cautious behavior. He doesn't like to change, he wants to adopt, uh, he gets back a lot to tradition, to culture, to, to, uh, to religion. So uh, also conservative social and political philosophy stresses on the importance of authority and duty. And uh, so uh, you have to stick to the authority, to the, uh, to the traditions, to the el elderly. So you have to adopt what they say. So that all of this is associated with uh, conservatism. And conservatism as a political ideology took new forms or two vari uh, new variations. Uh, like if you remember socialism when it took uh, this um, modern dimension or more uh, contemporary dimension or a new form like social democracy, for conservatism it's the same. We have cons old conservatism, traditional conservatism, authoritarian conservatism, and then we have the new right theories and values, which we will cover uh, in the coming lecture in detail. So conservatism is always uh, defined by the desire to conserve uh, and to be against. Uh, you have suspicion. You are not worried about change. You don't want to change. You, ha you are resistant. So it's and identified by support for tradition, a belief in human imperfection and attempt to uphold the organic structure of society. We'll cover all this right now. So conservatism also uh, was usually associated by uh, the ideas of the ruling class. So it's just the idea that you are not uh, you stick to traditions. You stick to, to the ruling class. You don't. Uh, you don't want change. You don't want revolution. You don't want the masses to rule. It's just that we have to preserve the society as it is. So it legitimizes the status quo. So you defend the interests of the people right now ruling. So you are conserving. You are uh, preserving what's already there. You don't want change. So the what who's ruling right now? The dominant or elite groups should be in power. Uh, let's back to the, uh, go back to the uh, origin of this ideology. Uh, it was a reaction to political, social and economic change, particularly the French Revolution. So when the French Revolution erupted in 1789, 
the masses took over. So the elitist or the ruling class already there was just uh, dis completely destroyed. And a lot of people witnessed that this is very bad for the society. From them was Edmund Burke. So Edmund Burke was, uh, uh, he was a British uh, thinker, but he looked back at the French society and the aftermath of the French Revolution and didn't like what was taking place there. So he wrote uh, his famous book uh, as a reaction to the French Revolution and he didn't want what uh, what already took over in France to be the norm and that it would be there in everywhere like in Britain so that uh, that was the idea um, conservatives as uh, if you if you like the development the con we know in the UK the conservative political party right now so the conservative was originally the Tories so those were the people who, who were associated with conservative beliefs. But so the conservative ideas in general were first emerged in the late 18th century and the early 19th century. And they arose, uh, as we said, as a reaction to the uh, growing pace of economic and social change uh, symbolized by the French Revolution of 1789. Um, they were conservatives wanted to preserve order, to preserve social order, to pre they didn't want change or revolution. So uh, Edmund Burke's ideas were developed uh, in 1790 when he wrote, uh, so that's the late 18th century when he wrote the reflections on the revolution in France. Uh, UK conservatism drew was drawn heavily upon the ideas of Edmund Burke. So all those UK conservatives uh, drew upon him. They were, uh, he had a famous idea change in order to conserve. We'll tackle this uh, now. So this conservatism arose as um, a reaction to the French Revolution and the process of organization in the West. What's, what's the notion of change in order to conserve? What is that about? So conservatism um, means uh, stressed on something that you have to adapt to changing circumstances. So it's not the idea that you keep everything, but try to reform the idea of reform, gradual change or reform versus revolution. So you have to adapt for the society. It has to change in order to conserve. So you have to have gradual change, not a revolution. So that's the idea that society should adapt to changing circumstances rather than reject change or and risk revolution or rebellion. So uh, you have to adapt values such as tradition, such as hierarchy uh, and authority to the emerging conditions of mass politics, meaning that if societies want to change, you have to adapt to those changes. You don't just say, no, we will have this and the society is uh, totally against you and we be, be, as an as, a, as an authority as a, or as a political leader you have to think of what is changing in the society uh, how to adapt to those changes how to respond to people how to provide some channels in order to uh, listen to the people to understand them um, conservatism as a political ideology was adapted to na different national cultures that means that uh, it was in France, it was in uh, the UK, it was in, uh, as a movement, we have some political parties in Canada, uh, Canadian uh, Conservative Party, for example. Uh, so that was meaning that this conservatism as an ideology was adapted to different national cultures. And also uh, we have the new rightist movements and the new right, uh, we have a strong movement in the US, for example, uh, also uh, in many other countries. So we will check this in the, in the lecture. Uh, conservative parties, we have, uh, for example, the conserva Canadian Conservative Party. Uh, uh, it was uh, trying to uh, preserve what's there and uh, be more uh, progressive in its policies. 
and also uh, in continental Europe, meaning in Europe as a continent, um, we'll have uh, some autocratic monarchies uh, persisted and developed more authoritarian uh, form of conservatism. We have a lot of uh, conservative uh, parties um, that developed after World War II. And um, for example, in Germany and Italy, also in the USA. Uh, um, in the USA, as you know, we don't have those extreme ideologies, uh, meaning that we don't have this extreme polarization between liberals, socialists, and conservatives, so it's more pragmatic. But that doesn't mean that the, the new right movement or new right ideas didn't influence uh, American politics. So that's the logo of the British Conservative Party. Uh, this is the logo of the Canadian Conservative Party. Third, we will uh, tackle now uh, the key pillars of conservatism. Conservatism as a political attitude was to conserve and resistant or uh, suspicious of change. Uh, it mentioned that human beings are morally and intellectually imperfect and they seek security. Uh, they don't want change, they want order, they want security, they want authority. So uh, they said that we have to get back to history. We have that experience, the role of experience is very important. That if you uh, are experienced in something, you already learned it a lot. So you have to just not ignore it or skip it completely and go to learn something else as an example. You have to follow traditions, you have to uh, build upon what the elderly or the ancestors have already done. And civilization wouldn't be there except after building upon what others, uh, the ancestors, have uh, contributed. Some, sometimes conservatism is associated with the idea of being a negative philosophy, meaning that it has the desire to resist change. But uh, according to Edmund Burke, it's not resistant to change, but you have to uh, follow some ideas that you have to change a little bit, or so you have to have gradual changes. So that's the, uh, the debate. And also, uh, conservatism values those uh, uh, like nor um, concepts. Uh, like tradition, like human imperfection, like uh, organic society, hierarchy and authority, and property. Uh, what distinguishes uh, conservatism is that it has a defense of the status quo, tradition, human imperfection, organic society, property. So those values of the, that we discussed of the conservative ideology differentiate this differentiates this uh, ideology from the other ideologies. Uh, first, uh, tradition. So tradition means accumulated wisdom of the past. Uh, so you get back to the old practices that have been tested a lot. So you already know that uh, this is good for you, this is good for the society. So it's a common practice that has been done for ages. So you uh, would uh, follow this. And uh, so the institutions that we built will be uh, there for generations to come. So according to it, you have to work a lot because what, what you're doing is beneficial for the coming generations. Uh, some conservatives ha have associated this with God uh, that, um, for example, Burke said that society was shaped by the law of our creators. So conservatism sometimes, even if you listen uh, or read about conservative uh, movements, they sometimes they say religious conservative movements or religious cons uh, movements uh, are associated with being conservative. So conservatism and religion are uh, related. But is it always related to divine origin? Is conservatism always linked to divine origins. Most conservatives support tradition without needing to argue its 
related to divine origins. Divine origins meaning religious or related to God. Uh, so, so Burke also said, uh, in addition to that religion is related to conservatism, that um, the society itself is a connection. So it's a connection between those who are living, those who are dead, and those who are to be born. The view of human nature, uh, human imperfection, uh, they believed, unlike the liberals, the liberals had a very optimistic view of human nature, but uh, conservatives believed that they had a very pessimistic view of human nature. They, they, th they didn't rely upon human nature. They didn't give, uh, they didn't want to give uh, individuals a lot of freedom because they didn't feel that they are rational enough, that they are reliable. So what they said about conservatism, uh, about uh, human nature, is that human beings are limited, dependent, and seeking security-seeking creatures. Uh, humans are morally corrupt. They are selfish. They have they have greed and thirst for power. They all they think uh, for their own interests only. And uh, also, human rationality is unable to cope with the infinite complexity of the world, so humans are not rational, so you have to decide for them. So masses are not rational, you have to decide for them, you have to uh, give them orders, you have to uh, not rely upon their uh, good nature. So people can only be persuaded to behave in a civilized fashion if they are deterred from expressing their violent or anti-social impulses. So people are violent by nature, they are anti-social. That's also unlike uh, socialism. Socialism didn't believe that people are anti-social, they believe that people are so very social. So that's the idea that differentiates the um, liberal point of view of human nature from the socialist point of view, from the conservative so point of view. And another uh, key point or cornerstone of um, conservatism is their view of the society. They believe that the society is an organic society, meaning that people are not, uh, so not, not atomic society, people are div just divided. They are dependent and they are security seeking creatures. So they have to live together, they have to work together. So they believe that society should view, be viewed as an organic and that uh, institutions were developed out, out of this natural necessity that people would be fragile, would be uh, very fragile without each other. So organic society that individuals cannot uh, exist outside society and they cannot be separated from their family, their friends, or peer groups, or workmates, or colleagues. Uh, conservatism also had a view of authority, and they said that hierarchy and authority is a must. So hierarchy means that, the, that a society is, you have to follow that, you have uh, like a pyramid, you have uh, at the top, you have the, the ruling class, and then you have the middle class, you have the lower classes, it's just as a pyramid uh, and you can see uh, who's on the top, who's on the middle, who's um, on the base, so that's meaning that it's a hierarchy, it's always a hierarchy. You have, to, you have uh, for example, uh, a manager, you have uh, like uh, some employees, some uh, lower, uh, lower grade employees, so that's the idea of uh, the mid-managers or some, some people in between. So that is that society is hierarchical and also that power status and property are always unequally distributed. So if you don't have enough property, so that doesn't give you the right to revolt. You have to accept this. You are living in an unequal society. So that is, uh, if you are privileged nobleman, you are not like a common man. So that's the idea of having a hierarchical society. As for property, it means that the ownership of physical goods and wealth is uh, is uh, highly uh, valued. That if you uh, if you have you have value because uh, because you have 
uh, property and you are secure and it's also uh, gives you independence from the government and um, so property for conservatives is secured you have to have nobility they have to live well and they have to uh, respect the law and everybody should respect the property of others now we come to uh, the last part in this lecture about the main schools and divisions within conservative thought we have many schools of conservative thought we have authoritarian conservatism it's very it's very authoritarian it means that just you have to uh, be autocratic uh, and uh, trust on the government's role you uh, to establish order and you didn't you don't give people liberties you didn't don't give people a lot of rights uh, or the idea that right is associated with the authority so the authority itself gives the individuals rights they don't they don't have the right to re uh, to revolt uh, but then there were more modest and anglo-american uh, conservative writings uh, to demonstrate that people that conservatives are committed to democratic to democracy it's not authoritarian it's not that uh, you don't give people liberties uh, you don't give people uh, a chance uh, to participate a lot politically but you have there's a lot of liberal democratic principles and it's, it was not authoritarian Con authoritarian conservatism um, it's conservatism favoring authoritarian rule, rule of one rule of a small class of people you don't allow a lot of liberties and that was inspired by um, a thinking of Joseph de Mastre, he's a French thinker, and he was very critical of the French Revolution, um, and he lived between 1753 and died in 1821. Um, it, this form of authoritarian conservatism um, was there in Russia, uh, and continental Europe and uh, so um, it's a form of uh, conservative tradition or some rightist uh, 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 movements can be said as fascism fascism we will um, is a political ideology which we will cover also in this course is pro uh, pro tradition it's uh, very extremist very hierarchical uh, uh, it's pro hierarchy pro order pro tradition so it's a form of authoritarian conservatism the idea that you have to have a single ruler having or a lead a power, very powerful leader the very authoritarian one so that is a form of authoritarian conservatism. So after the, uh, the advance of constitutionalism and the idea of democracy and the advance of liberal uh, ideology and the fall of fascism, uh, th th that led to questioning authoritarian conservatism, whether it's a good ideology or a bad ideology. Another uh, conservatism called One Nation Conservatism, it developed in the UK by the ideas of Benjamin Disraeli and he was um, a prime minister, UK prime minister in 1868 and again from 1874 till uh, 1880 and he tried to draw attention to the danger of Britain being divided into two nations the rich and the poor so he was critical of uh, the very authoritarian conservatism he provided a new form of conservatism and that influenced the UK uh, Tory democracy uh, as we know it uh, right now so it was a, a planned conservatism and he uh, wanted to adopt uh, or to renew some of the traditions of conservatism and it was said to be a paternalistic conservatism paternalistic means it's a fatherly pa uh, fashion so uh, it's an authority of the father so the father as if the ruler and the ruled uh, can be uh, equated with a father and a son so that um, he said that 
the wealthy have an obligation to look after the less well off. So it's a one nation conservatism. So it's a paternalistic conservatism and it's a one nation conservatism, meaning that uh, that people the, the the wealthy are like a father. So they have the obligation to uh, to look after the less well off or the or the son in this case. Another form of conservatism called the liberal conservatism, uh, also uh, influenced by the writing of Edmund Burke, uh, writings of Edmund Burke and Adam Smith, and it favored a little bit of economic freedoms for the individual. That you have, you can have a strong state, but try to have uh, uh, freedoms, give freedoms for individuals. So it relied more upon some kind of um, uh, that. People are good by nature, so that's that gives it the, uh, the uh, like the liberal flavor. Uh, libertarian conservatism is more against uh, authoritarian conservatism because it 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 goes more than liberal conservatism to uh, give more economic liberties for individual, uh, more laissez fair liberal uh, liberalism, which means give everything for the or give a lot of uh, rights for uh, liberties for the individual, so laissez faire, laissez passer. So that's the idea of just giving more uh, rights for the individuals. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, now we, fin we, we are done with the first part of conservatism. And uh, we will cover next time, uh, uh, we'll continue on the main schools and um, and uh, traditions of uh, or the different divisions of conservatism and uh, good luck in studying and keep safe and take care